wavering at the edge of where the Red Sea had just been, each Israelite faces a great moment of decision. The shimmering walls of water of the miraculously parted sea tower over them, while Pharaoh's army is quickly bearing down behind them. They can't go back, but who's ever seen water do this before? Will it stay, or will it crash down on them? They've never had swimming lessons, and each needs instant faith and courage to take the first step onto the seafloor. Would you have the courage to do it? Now, just like the Israelites' long journey toward the Promised Land, we too are journeying to the Promised Land of exaltation and eternal life with our Heavenly Father. So what can we learn from them? Well, we first need to understand exactly who the Israelites are. They're God's chosen covenant people. But for over 300 years, they were slaves in captivity, with no real education, nor practice making choices for themselves. Like other captive civilizations throughout history, their basic needs of food, water, and shelter were meagerly met by their taskmasters. Their time had been spent building monuments to various Egyptian pharaohs and gods, but they now need to relearn who the true God of Abraham is. Sure, they witnessed the power of the Lord throughout the plagues, the miraculous Passover, and getting freed from Egypt, but the Exodus will teach them how to exercise faith in God. At the Red Sea, Moses declares, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord today, for ye shall see the Egyptians no more. The Lord shall fight for you. Now, since leaving Egypt, God points the way for them through a miraculous cloud, which provides shade by day and light by night, while at the same time projects disorienting darkness to the pursuing Egyptians so they can't overtake the fleeing Israelites. Now, once the Israelites are safely through the sea, the waters crash down and swallow Pharaoh's armies. Indeed, the Israelites witness God fight for them. When we seek deliverance today, we can remember how the Lord saved Israel and that His amazing, unfathomable power can save us too. So, passing through the Red Sea was symbolic of new birth or baptism and a beginning on the covenant path. This safe passage caused the Israelites to rejoice and sing a song of joy. But their peace is short-lived because, well, they get thirsty. And the only source of water turns out to be very bitter. So they murmur. They beg Moses, their church leader, for water because they haven't yet learned to speak to God for themselves. One wonders, how quick are we to complain to our church leaders? And to whom do we go for deliverance from each of our trials? Here's a good suggestion. Inquire of God before Google or social media. Fortunately, a loving God mercifully sends the Israelites a miracle and shows Moses a tree to cut down and put in the water to make it sweet. Symbolizing the tree of life, filled with the fruit of the love of God, this tree gives its life as a savior for them to make the water pure just like the love of God can make our lives pure and turn bitterness to sweetness. Interestingly, after just a short time of experiencing freedom from slavery and wandering in the desert, the Israelites quickly adopt a fatalistic view, looking mm -hmm. only at extremes. Slavery or death? They don't yet realize that with God, there are much better options, like salvation and redemption. Still, how long does it take us to go from enjoying blessings to murmuring about hardships? For them, it didn't take long, because now they're hangry. But God hears their complaints and says, I will rain bread from heaven for you. This daily heavenly gift, called manna, continues for many years. Once, the Lord also sent quail to eat. Too bad they didn't combine the manna and quail to make the world's first chicken nuggets, Yum. <laughs> right? Okay, but seriously, through manna, God teaches many principles to the Israelites, including faith that the Lord will provide, and the weekly gift of the Sabbath, a day to rest and remember God with gratitude and reverence. Now, God sends us daily miracles too, 
like food, body, and life. How often do we gratefully acknowledge them? Happiness isn't based on the situation we're in, rather on the choices we make. Well, guess what? Now the Israelites really have something to complain about as the people of Amalek ambush and attack them. Moses climbs on top of a hill, and when he holds up his hands, Israel succeeds in battle. But when he lets his hands down, Amalek prospers. Naturally, as the day wears on, Moses' hands eventually become very heavy and tired, and he relies on his two great counselors, Aaron and Hur, to hold his hands up. Finally, with the help of God, the prophet, and his two counselors, the Israelites win the battle. So, God had fought the battle against the Egyptians for them. And in this instance, he showed that he would help them fight their own battles. They begin to learn line upon line about God, faith, and deliverance. Hey, did you know that some of the most amazing Easter symbolism comes from the Passover? Tune in for our special Easter episode. It takes a lot to make these videos, so to keep Line Upon Line free for everyone, consider donating. The link's in the description below. And thanks for watching. This episode is packed with info, so you might want to watch it again to make sure you didn't miss anything, including the hilarious jokes. If you feel this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, please subscribe and share. Most importantly, go read the scriptures for yourself.